using Aristotle's model of causality to understand systemic behavior. In this video, we'll examine Aristotle's model of causality and how it can be used to gain insight into system behavior. We'll also look at how this model relates to the iceberg model of systems. This slide depicts Aristotle's four types of causality, which captures a different way of thinking about the causes of a situation or a system. Consider starting at the bottom left of the figure. If you were making a sculpture, your choice of materials would influence the outcome. The process that you would choose also would influence the outcome. So if your sculpture was ice and you chose to use heat to melt and shape the sculpture rather than a chisel, of course, the sculpture would be different. The design or form of what you envisioned also influences the statue itself. A statue of Mickey Mouse, of course, would be different than one of a horse. Another source influencing the outcome is the intent or the final cause. The statue that was intended as a tribute would likely be different than one that was given out for free as a promotional item. So Aristotle's model of causality provides a useful way of looking at the world and looking at a systemic set of conditions. For the last 200 years, Western civilization has been focusing their efforts on what might be arguably the bottom half of this model of causality. This bottom half is the realm of objects and processes and technology, efficiency. It's a mechanistic way of viewing the world, and it presumes the ability to manipulate or use objects to accomplish a particular task. Now, what would we do for innovation? Well, one suggestion, at least by Einstein, is that in order to solve problems, you can't use the same level of thinking that was used to create the problem. So one idea would be to shift your attention from solutions that are largely focused on the bottom to solutions that involve the top set of ideas in Aristotle's model of causality. The top domain represents goals and paradigms. So the opportunity for innovation then is in redefining goals and paradigms. While it's likely that doing so will redefine the use of materials and processes, the opposite isn't always true. Let's return to an example of systemic problems used in a previous video and see how that problem would be interpreted through the lens of Aristotle's model of causality. There's an epidemic in the United States where children are developing a type of diabetes that has been historically associated with middle age. This type of diabetes results from overconsuming sugar. In Aristotle's model, we can see that a material cause is the abundance of inexpensive sugar in the United States. The efficient cause or process that leads to the problem of early diabetes is the overconsumption of sugar by children. The formal cause is the institutional form that makes sugar a subsidized ingredient in processed foods. In this case, the form is federal subsidies to farms, which results in the overproduction of corn. The final cause or intent was the unexamined belief in the industrial scale farming as the means to a stable food source in the United States. So akin to an iceberg model, Aristotle's model of causality enables one to think of the interacting systemic conditions that create the systemic phenomena that we call problems. Okay, let's summarize. According to Aristotle, the causality consists of material cause, efficient cause, formal cause, and final cause. Material and efficient cause correspond to the physical reality, which are things and processes. Formal and final cause correspond to the relational reality, akin to goals and paradigms. These four areas of causality are similar to the iceberg model of systemic behavior. In the next video, we look at leveraged options to intervene in a system.